if Ryan Tannehill is your starting quarterback in week six, take a cyanide capsule. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trust of Profits 10-minute football rundown. I'm the formula joined today by El Ombre. So before we get into what we're going to talk about in week six, week five closed out with a major story and a major resignation. John Gruden, El Ombre, any thoughts? Yeah, uh, it's funny you bring that up. Listen, it's what, 2021, your guy comes out, and, and I'll be honest, when, when the news first broke, I sat there and I thought, this is uh, the media getting a hold of some minor thing. Uh, yeah. You know, overreaction, overreaction.com, like everything. Yeah, a couple cute little emails, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then you get in depth and you see that, the, I mean, there's racial slurs. There's uh, homosexual, homophobic, homophobic, homophobic slurs. slurs. It's yeah. wild stuff. I mean, this guy is off the rocker. It's 2021. JG has worn out his welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm glad to see it. And I, I, I think the Raiders did the right thing here. You know, if you don't like it, you're probably living in the, you know, Stone Age. Um, you're probably on the same team with anti-women voters. You're probably, you, you know, you don't want, I don't know. I just don't want to get into it. Let's talk about football. Let's not talk about John Gruden. I thought it was worth bringing up uh, because the whole world seems to be on fire about Gruden. He sucks. His career's over. I'm glad. Raider Nation unite. It's time for a new start. It's a good thing. You don't want this guy in the locker room anyway. Thanks for coming, John. Career over. Your Monday night football career sucked. You suck as a human. Goodbye. Next time for a new coach about. in Las Vegas yeah. and time for week six. Back, John. How's that? <laughs> Let's talk about the quarterback position, right? Um, so one thing that we're figuring out that a lot of us have figured out um, Ryan Tannehill, let's talk about him for a moment here. Preseason in a lot of fantasy football pools, he was ranked around the, the 10th quarterback, depending on who you ask. But if you look in a lot of leagues, that's probably around where he was drafted if you went by an auto pick. Um, he's had one game where he's thrown for more than one TD. So in week two, he threw for three. He has um, – even had a few 40 attempt games. So it's not like he's throwing 20 times a game and only getting one, ten, uh, one TD. He's actually throwing the ball around a lot and just not making much out of it, right? As of right now, he is under replacement level, right? So I consider replacement level someone who's ranked like in the, the mid-teens if you're in a 10-team league. Right now he's ranked 25th. He's looking up at t- uh, players that are free agents in most leagues like Jared Goff or Trevor Lawrence. So right now, those two players would have been a better option than Ryan Tannehill in previous weeks. If it wasn't obvious before they're playing Buffalo, it won't be pretty. (laughs) Um, You want to sit Ryan Tannehill now. And if you haven't been sitting him already, you might want to rethink your backup position, grab a few players off of waivers and see if you can make something happen. Because I I don't think Ryan Tannehill is going to go anywhere soon. I don't know why anybody has him on their team. The guy sucks. He's always sucked. I was just in the great city of Nashville a couple weeks ago. Yeah. That, that is a fun town. That is a, oh, a, good, a good team. Uh, the last quarterback they had there got murdered by his girlfriend or whatever else. Tannehill sucks. He's yeah. always sucked. Get him out. Bring in the next rookie. Make something happen. That dude has sucked for his whole career. I don't even know why he's in the league. I don't know why anybody would have him in fantasy. He, yeah, he was able to piece together something post Marcus Mariota. Like one year, right? Yeah, one year. He's not a long-term that. guy, though. He's, like he's a Scott journeyman. Mitchell. Scott Mitchell. There's there's your comp. There's your comp. Um, now, a little bit of advice here. If you're in a one-day pool, um, and I don't mean to sound like Captain Obvious here because I'm probably bringing up one of the best players in the league, but I think that this is a ripe opportunity, right? If you're in a one-day pool or if you're in a one-day league, the last two weeks, Draft Washington, Washington fan duel type hmm? stuff, DFS. Yeah, exactly. Um, the last two weeks, Washington has played against two quarterbacks, Jameis Winston and Matt Ryan. And both of those quarterbacks have put up top five performances for the week. We're not talking about your top tier quarterbacks. We're talking Jameis Winston, Matt Ryan. Jameis Winston's had some ups and downs. Jamie, a good, a good, a good defense. Live can, footage. 
yeah, live footage. A good a good defense can make him look silly. And Matt Ryan, as we know, is is on the downside of his career. Who are they playing this week? Who's Washington playing this week? Kansas City. This is the best time to whip out Pat Mahomes for one game, right? And Pat Mahomes right now, I think he's probably like the number two quarterback in the league. But this is one of those, if you're looking for a guaranteed week to get the most out of Pat Mahomes, I would think it's probably going to be this week. Yeah, and you know, the Chiefs are two and three. And I'm in a lot of the Facebook groups and Twitter chats and all this crap about, I mean, Patrick Mahomes has had, it's been a rough start for the Chiefs. Don't get me wrong. They're two and three. Everybody expects them to be four and one at this point, whatever else. They haven't looked good. The defense is garbage. Mahomes has not been wonderful, but he hasn't been terrible. I saw no. people selling him out. I mean, they're basically saying that he was a fraud. He's a, he's a phony. Uh, it's just irresponsible and stupid. That dude is awesome. Yeah. They will get their crap together. I don't know if they're winning the Super Bowl this year. I don't, you know, but they're uh, two and three. But they have lost some tough games and they have played bad. Yeah. We've seen Tom Brady look this bad at, at different times in his career. I'm not comparing him to Brady necessarily, but. I mean, to write this dude off after five games is stupid. You're an idiot if you're doing that right now. Yeah. And you're right. This is a big week. He should probably have 500 yards of offense combined. Yeah. And sleep. The Washington football team is a joke. Yeah. Next, I mean, it's not, like, next? it's not like writing off Aaron Rodgers like a sane person. Aaron team. Rodgers is a corpse laying there. All right. <laughs> we'll move along. Right. Go host Jeopardy, will you? All right, next position we're going to dive into. So the running back position. I think it's really interesting this year. Um, if you were to look at most teams, or most leagues in their top five picks, you'll probably find Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, Zeke Elliott, Dalvin Cook in some sort of order. I know in my league you I had rush more this year, yeah. Seriously, right? I mean, that's that's what most teams were, were looking for in their top five. Um and in my case, I took Derrick Henry. I think I lucked into that because if you look at the rest of these top fives, there is a mountain of difference, most of it having to do with injuries. I've been lucky. Derrick Henry hasn't had an injury like Christian McCaffrey's had. He didn't have one to start the season like Saquon Barkley. He hasn't had the issues that Delvin Cook has had. Um, but that just underscores how important this position is and how difficult it is. I even wonder at this point, right, is it worth it really to draft a running back that high, knowing that they could end up getting injured more easily than another position that you could get that, that top tier value out of. Um, But obviously in my case, Derrick Henry has been uh, pretty solid for me. So what does that mean in terms of fantasy right now? If you've got one of those guys, right? There's some interesting players out there right now that are still out there in a lot of leagues. Devante Booker, who came in, um, did some, Uh, I guess you could say work in lieu of Saquon Barkley's re-injury had a good fill in 14 carries 40 yards not great but he did have a touchdown they also had a quarterback change Uh, they brought in Mike Glennon so if you want to talk about bad quarterbacks we just opened that door wow Uh, if Mike Glennon has to play again this week Andre what do you think (laughs) Mike Glennon that dude's still in the league yeah, it, it's amazing that that guy's still getting work. Sorry, but Mike. I'm sure you're a wonderful person. I'm sure he is. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, Devontae Booker owned in 6% of the leagues last time I checked. I'm sure that's on the uptick. He might be a good fill-in guy because if your quarterback's Mike Glennon, you're going to be leaning on the running back position. He's going to want to dump it off. Capsule. He's not looking downfield very often. He's probably going to be looking for a couple quick hits there. Yeah, we actually have live footage of uh, Mike Glennon's career here, in case you were oh, wondering. Oh, yeah. Let's let's get a view of that. Oh, oh yeah. That may have been game two. He played with the Bears. Before, that dude's about uh, 6'10". Trubisky. Yeah, he's a big guy. A giant he, man. He, and he probably pulled me up like a paper airplane, so I don't want to talk too much trash about him. <laughs> but what are we doing next? Uh, yeah, so Alex Collins is another good pickup. So 15 carries, 47 yards last week, 25 in the air. So Russell Wilson, he's got an injury. Geno Smith coming in for him. That's another position. G-Unit. Yeah, where they're probably going to be dumping it off to the running back, probably running more, trying to find ways to alleviate the quarterback position and not lean on their big man. I don't so know. I fully, recognize, I fully recognize Wilson's. Wilson's a playmaker, makes things happen. Seahawks yeah, don't yeah. have a Super Bowl without him, that type of stuff. Oh, absolutely. But G, yeah. G Smith came in the other week. I got to tell you, I watched that game. I watched the whole game. Oh, yeah. G Smith didn't look bad. 
mean, totally he, capable he looked, of backup. He's playing for his career, right? I mean, if he doesn't yeah. show something right now on a – and the Seahawks, let's be honest, they're an above-average team, but they're not a great yeah. team. He, he's playing for his career right now. If he fails on this team, it's over for G. Smith. Yeah, I, I kind of sure. – he seems like a good enough guy. I, Although we I thought, thought it was over for Mike Glenn, and let's be obvious here. Cool. <laughs> let's be – <laughs> no, it's it's really it, it really is over yeah. for Mike Glennon though. Yeah. Right now he's a stopgap or something. I hope. Much like Jared Goff. Next. Yeah. So Gino Much Smith, like John totally, Gruden. totally agree, but they probably want to help him out a little bit to not put the the whole team on his shoulders. The other person I was going to mention, Khalil Herbert, looks really good last week. He got the bulk of the carries. I heard that David Montgomery's coming back, so they could have a very full backfield. So I, I don't want to put too much of an emphasis on Khalil Herbert, but also knowing that if David Montgomery's coming back so quickly, you know, you, you hate not to think that a player could be injury carries. prone. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. So moving on, wide receiver position. So there's a couple guys I've been talking about week in and week out. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Allen Robinson the second. Couple of these guys. Can we just drop Allen on my Robinson team? from the conversation? The Bears suck. They are who we thought they were. They're not worthy of a conversation. Unless they're playing the Lions, they're going to look like trash. Next. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Allen Robinson. Talented receiver. It's not his fault, but he's on the Bears. Yeah. It, and last week, right, against Las Vegas, in what we now know is Gruden's last game in the NFL, most likely, he, uh, Justin Fields put up. 111 yards and now the town is ready to to crown him king just want to let you know that about it i i'm sure this kid has a future i know they got some training wheels on him but he's not king yet let's just pump the brakes on him looking good looking looking no not even looking good 111 yards is, is still what it is um yeah, but one thing I, he statistically is trash the team is trash so it's not even his fault like you said it's not yeah it's not, i'm not sure anybody could walk in there and, and do a whole lot better but yeah, let's not annoy him and... King. He's Kyle Orton right now at best. All right. Yeah. So yeah, with the three players I mentioned, right, we're, we're getting into the point where uh, some of these guys, Calvin Ridley, he's got some injury issues. So I think that that probably is, uh, is part of the issue there. Julio Jones, I just dropped him outright. And we've talked about Ryan Tannehill. Any of the receivers that you really have on Tennessee that you were hoping would be something are probably not something by this point, and it's really disappointing. But let me just put it out there. Congrats to anyone who drafted Mike Williams this year. Probably got him in the seventh round at the earliest. Um, he was, I think, in most leagues rated in the 80s, so you might even got him in the ninth round. But right now he's the best wide receiver, maybe second best to Cooper Cup, depending on how your, your league scores. And he's Freak Justin show. Herbert's main target. Well freak done. show, freak show over freak human. Show. Um, let me let me go into a start this week. This this is going to hit close to home. T. Higgins, he's a wide receiver for Cincinnati Bengals. He's probably been sitting on your roster for a couple weeks. He had two weeks where he was injured. Last week he came back, probably put up about five points. But guess what? Joe Burrows is maturing as a quarterback. He looked really good last week. He's been looking better and better as the weeks go on. In fact. I'm starting him over TB12 this week because Whoa. they're playing the Lions. Could be a track meet in Ford Field. In one direction. One direction. In one, dire <laughs> in one direction. So I would say T. Higgins, if you've been sitting him, this would probably be another good – this would be a good week to uh, take the sit tag off. Here's a hot, here's a hot take him. for you. Hot take. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow. has looked good. I mean, he's yeah. rookie of the year right now. He's consensus legit, which is hard to do as a he's, he's a second year player, but he's basically a rookie. Yeah, uh, with his injury last year, he looks fully legit. He has that team that he has the respect. He looks like a leader, other than the fact he looks like Macaulay Culkin. But if there was ever a time for a maturity point to hit, it's against the Lions. The Lions' yeah. defense is amongst the worst in the league. <laughs> Burrow is. What what's the, what are the Bengals two and three or three and two? I mean they're not they're yeah they're in the middle. Yeah, they haven't looked amazing or bad, but with a young quarterback and a young core, I don't hate where the Bengals are at, and they're going to score no. a thousand points against the Lions. A thousand. I think they have a talented receiver core. They got Joe Mixon at running back. They've got yeah. a lot of really good pieces on offense. 
Um, By the way, John was, Gruden. John Gruden's a big supporter of Joe Mixon when he was beating on the women. Go ahead. Exactly. Um, and then a couple ads, right? So, uh, Kadarius Tony, New York Giants. So he's on one of the worst teams in the league. Sure. Um, Daniel Jones, obviously suspect and concussed right now. Wow. Uh, but last game, hold on here. Hold on for a second. Last game, he was targeted 13 times as a rookie with 10 catches and he got 189 yards. A lot of that came from Mike. Talking about James lights out. Tony, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Lost, right. Yeah. Kadarius, Tony rookie from Florida, New York football <laughs> giants. He had a coming out party last week. He was owned by about 40, 40 leagues, uh, 40% of the leagues uh, last week. And I think it's probably getting higher now is his, I saw the percentage this morning and it had skyrocketed. He's probably available in maybe 20% of the leagues. Now, if he's still out there, that might be a good person to grab. Mm. And then one more Marquez Callaway. Um, He's still available in a ton of leagues out there. Jameis Winston has to throw to somebody. Lately, it's been Callaway getting more and more each week. He had two touchdowns last week. I don't like the fact that he had eight targets and, and four receptions. I don't think it's all on him, but um, this might be a good guy if you've got – always need wide receivers in fantasy. I feel like right? that Usually Saints there's... team is just such a coin flip wild card. Like, it's weird. Winston, Winston and his receiving core, and that whole team for that matter, is something that can make or break your whole week. Like if you need yeah. Winston's the type of guy, like if you really fully commit, you're probably going to screw yourself. But if you yeah. meet him once or twice and you hit, hit him at the right time, it's all timing with Winston. Because I mean, that dude is couldn't be more inconsistent if he tried, but I don't know. Right. And he will put up the weirdest numbers too, like 211 yards, but four touchdowns, right? Yeah. Numbers that just don't make sense. Yeah, let's right. let's move this thing along. Let's get into some uh let's get into our top five best bets of the week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because so, I think I think it's a good week to make money. Last week we went three and two. Yeah. Uh you made a little bit. We didn't do amazing, but not bad. And this week I feel a lot more comfortable with these five, these top five best bets of the week for week six. Who, who yeah. are you starting with? Yeah, they all start to make sense here. So Houston plus ten and a half at Indianapolis, right? So ten and a half is a lot of points. Yep. Their quarterback, Davis Mills, started to look good last week. I mean, he actually started to put things together, and they're playing Indianapolis, who is not that great. Um, and yeah, Houston playing uh New England last week, they actually kept it pretty close. So I'm sort of comping that game to this game, thinking ten and a half seems like a gift when they just lost by like what three, five points to New England. Not it's a great big New England team. It's too big of a number. Indianapolis. Too big of a number. Indianapolis could probably win by more than that if they needed to, but I think it's going to be a situation where their Indy gets up a couple touchdowns, takes the foot off the gas. Yeah. Uh, Houston covers. I love yeah. that play. I will probably, uh, you know, put a couple, couple C notes on that thing. I love Investment. that one. Yeah. I like all these a lot though. Houston plus 10 and a half. Yeah. He's not that good. Feels their right. kicker can't make a field goal. What's the dude with the black horn rim glasses looking like Elvis Costello out of the football field. Yeah. What's next? Go ahead. What's next? Buffalo minus five and a half at Tennessee on the road. Minus wow. five and a half. It sounds crazy, but right now Buffalo is the most complete team out there. Their defense is rock solid. Their offense, as much as I've been wanting to slam Josh Allen ever since he's been drafted, I am eating crow on him every night now. He's back in the MVP conversation. And Tennessee the MVP. sucks. They suck. Tennessee yes. sucks, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. Minus we five and a half. I don't know how Buffalo could blow them out by like 20, honestly. Yeah. Derrick Henry Another. could get 180 yards rushing with four TDs, and yet they would still cover uh, the Buffalo spread, right? And full Buffalo disclosure, it's spread. Wednesday right now. This line is not going to stay there. Buffalo is going to be like seven or more, I think, because right. anybody with the right mind is shoving all in on Buffalo. Minus five and a half at Tennessee is a lock. Jam it in today while you can. Go. Yeah, and then Minnesota at Carolina, the line, uh, the over under is forty seven and a half. We've got it going under. Not liking the offense so much for either of these teams. Minnesota struggling to put up points, and now they have to play outdoors at Carolina. 
and even Carolina, right? Sam Darnold struggled last week. He's been looking good. He's been putting up some good yardage, but even at times when he's putting up good yards, he's not scoring a lot of touchdowns. So this does feel like a good under to be playing here. Also, both teams have a great defense. So that's McCaffrey in as back. Well. Is McCaffrey? He's probably playing, right? <sighs> I don't know if McCaffrey's back yet. I don't know. If the, I haven't heard them say I don't that. Think he anybody is for does? Sure back. I think last week they they actually almost made him you know available. I think they're playing games with the media and all that like they do, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I like the under here too. I, I think Minnesota's yeah. trash. Uh, my guy from MSU, Kirk Cousins, I, I just don't, I don't like that team. Uh, the kissing quarterback. I think, I think Darnold and the Panthers are going to win this game. It's going to be close. And I think it's going to be low scoring like a 20 to 17 type game or something like that. I yeah. think un, under is a good play. And even if Mac does play, I don't think they're going to give him 20 touches, right? They're going to ease him back in. He's the investment. Yeah, yeah, and it makes sense. In a 17-week right. season especially, good. Seattle at Pittsburgh. The line is set to 42 and a half. Got to go over. 42 and a half. I mean, that is just like dog food numbers right there. Um, it, my formula right now has them both scoring about 24 apiece. So there's some wiggle room there in terms of like where the formula thinks they are versus where the over-under is. And that's even considering that Geno Smith is going to be taking over quarterback duties from the the recently out of surgery Russell Wilson, right? With the um, pretzel finger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, neither team is great. Neither team has a good defense. Seattle has the worst defense in the league. I know Pittsburgh's offense isn't all that great, but you have to imagine if you've got two teams with bad defenses, points are going to get scored, you know. By the way, for all the obese children in the in the world, and obesity is a pandemic in America. Uh, just look at Ben Roethlisberger. He's an obese quarterback in America. He's making yeah. it. He's making a hundred million dollars. He sucks. I mean, the guy's he's had a classic career, Roethlisberger. But look at that. That that is pathetic. But even that team can score against Seattle. Uh, G. Smith. This game just has like forty-two and a half is a low total. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I see it about 27, 24. I think it's an easy cover. Yeah, period. Even even with Ben, I mean Ben out there raping girls in the bathroom, whatever he's doing. No offense. What's our last one? Out of we're going five. We're gonna hit all five this week. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. So the Los Angeles Chargers plus three and a half at Baltimore. I feel like the Chargers are gonna win this outright. That's what our formula says. They're gonna win it by like three and a half, as opposed to. Uh, the spread predicting they'll lose it by three and a half. Baltimore's been up and down all year. I'm actually going to look, look up the money line on this thing for an outright win. Right. Yeah, keep, keep going, I mean, sorry. they they almost lost. If Indianapolis had any sort of kicker, they would have lost that game on Monday night. Um, obviously, Lamar Jackson putting up gobs and gobs of statistics. He's one of the statistically oh, yeah. high, uh, best quarterbacks in football right now, which amazes me because he's got the he reminds issue. me of Michael Vick. He's an un- unbelievable player. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. He and does I hope, some amazing I really, things. Sincerely, I hope he wins the Super Bowl before his career is done because I really, yeah. I think he's got the right attitude and he's, he's a yeah. freak show of a talent. Yeah. By the way, the line, the money line is a, uh, 131 plus 131. So every 100 bucks you put on the Chargers, you get 131 bucks back. It's basically. Not bad. Uh, three to two odds almost. I mean, you're yeah. looking at – I think the Chargers are going to win this game outright. You're right. I think so too. Yeah. Three and a half is a gift. Take it. Take your kid's college fund. Put it all on there. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. Uh, this, is yeah. a, this, is, this is probably my lock of the week here. Yeah, I, I love the Chargers offense. Herbert is looking like the quarterback oh, everyone should have drafted People are last anointing year. him as Christ, whatever they got to do. I mean – And yes. then they're, they're running back. Uh, What's his name? Eichler, Eckler. Um, yeah, he's I'll one of the best there. in the leagues as well. I mean, and what an attitude on that kid too. These these guys are young and they're smart. They're they, they're very smart. They when when they're interviewed, they don't make an ass of themselves. They don't act like Gruden. I mean, they're just. Right. It seems like that Chargers team is young and together, and I, it feels right for them. I don't know if they'll win the whole thing this year, but they are going to win a lot of games this year. Really, is a, a team you you want to root for too. I mean, we're lions fans. So obviously we've given up already. It's, it's yeah, week six. So there's nothing left to root for there. So you usually find another team. My backup team is always new Orleans. Um, but you also look at other teams and you're like, yeah, I could, I could get behind them just because I like their attitude. They're so, hard you know, to hate. I mean, LA. 
Austin Eckler's out there sounding like freaking, uh, you know, he saw, I saw him the post game interview. He was, the, he was most, the most together. And that's after like coming off a high, like you just want and beat the out of somebody. Yeah. And that dude, that guy came off the field and he yeah. was like very composed, very yeah. professional. I'm like, damn, that dude, that dude is, uh, he's the right, he's got the right mentality. He's yeah. a winner. Yeah. So, yeah. A what else? Model. Anything else before we close out of this thing? We're way, that is it. way late. That is it. Our, our 10 minutes ran into 25. So I, I think that's a great place to cut it. And here we thought we were going to underrun it today. What happened? <laughs> well, thanks to John Gruden for the, uh, the, uh, few, the few minutes of fun there with him. And it's not fun mm-hmm. at all, but no, I think we yeah. got it good week six. Looking forward to it. We'll see you guys all next week. Peace out. 